Power to the people, not the corporations. Power to the people, not the corporations. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99% and you are the 99%. It is my privilege to introduce Chris DeSoe. My husband David and I heard him speak at Charter Oak Cultural Center around six years ago. He had just returned with one of his sons, Micah. I think, Chris, he was about 11 at the time. Um, uh, from Darfur, Sudan. And he motivated us to immediate action. Chris is the co-founder of the Hartford Catholic Worker, which houses the homeless and runs several programs for underprivileged children. Not only is Chris committed to serving the poor and oppressed in Hartford, along with his wife Jackie and other faith-based activists, but he repeatedly performs nonviolent action and is witness to war-ravaged areas by journeying not only to Darfur numerous times, but to Iraq, Palestine, and Bosnia. Always working to help make our world a better place and being sought after as a motivational speaker, Chris still managed to recently receive his PhD from Yale Divinity School. Yay! Woo! Woo! Chris! Yay, Chris is right. It is with great admiration that I introduce Chris to so. And thank you for being here, Chris. Thank you, Mark. We, we all Yay, love Chris. you, Chris. I got a, one correction. Yeah. Um, I don't I'm not a doctor, I'm just a master. A master, 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 master. <laughs> well, I, I'll be brief. I want us to start by considering the notion of habeas corpus. Right, we've heard a lot about this in the last couple of years because our government has suspended it for the people we've kidnapped abroad and sent to a gulag down in Guantanamo Bay. But we're, we should be familiar with this idea of habeas corpus. It's one of the bedrock principles of democracy. It's perhaps 700 years old. Literally, literally, it means produce the body. Show me the body. So for corporations, if corporations are people, then let's write a writ of habeas corpus and show us the body. Yeah. Yeah. Show me the body yeah. of these corporations. Yeah. Right? Justice Thomas, show me the body right. of, of uh, Bank of America. Right. Show me the, the body of Aetna and Travelers. Right. You know, show me the heart. Show, right. show me, right? right. <laughs> you know, Justice Kennedy, bring me the Lehman Brothers. Yeah. Right? Do Woo. these people exist? Now, I want to be careful here because as a Catholic, I do believe in this notion of a mystical body, right? This notion that all of us are a body. It's a notion that our friends in the unions share, that all together we are one. And an injury to one is an injury to all. An injury to one part of the body is an injury to the entire body, okay? What makes us a whole body is that we love each other, all of us. And I don't mean some, you know, romantic, sentimental notion, oh, I love you. No. Love is feeding people when they're hungry. Yeah. Love is sheltering people when they're homeless. Yeah. Right? right? Love is educating folks. Right. No, that is love. Corporations don't love. Corporations don't love. It is not loving of a corporation to boost their profit margin for their shareholders by closing down factories and laying people off. It's not loving of a corporation to hand out hundreds of millions of dollars of bonuses to their CEOs while we have 10% unemployment in our country. 20 or 30% up in the North End where I live. That's not loving. That's not loving. If these corporations claim to be people Bring us the body. Right. But let me ask you this. A body alone does not make a person. If the Lehman Brothers remarkably appeared before us today, I would argue that they are still not a person because a body without a soul or without a heart is not a person. I've seen enough movies to know what a body without a heart or a soul is. It's a damn zombie. That's right. And how do we get rid of zombies? We lump off the head. <laughs> right? If we want to get rid of these corporations, let's take them off at the head, metaphorically speaking, of course. 
consider the perversity of this, corporations. Corporations can cross international borders and remain people. But when people cross international borders looking for work for their children, looking for a better future for their children, like our grandparents did, and then unfortunately our grandparents changed the rules so that people can't do that any longer. When those people, people with flesh and blood in their veins, cross international borders, they lose their personhood. They become illegal aliens. And then you have corporations like Corrections Corporation of America. Look them up, CCA. They're one of the few corporations whose uh, uh, stock price has risen during this recession. It's risen because their business is locking up people. Poor people are the raw materials of this economy. Poor people are the raw materials of corporations like Corrections Corporation of America. That dreadful immigration law down in Arizona, it was written by lobbyists on Cor uh, Corrections Corporations of America's dole. They wrote that law so that we can lock up these poor people so they can maximize profits for their CEO and their shareholders. That's not a thing a person does. A loving person doesn't do that. Right. A loving person doesn't declare people to be aliens. Right. The aliens among us are the corporations. Yes. They're right. zombies. Yeah. Lop them off at their head. Right. Uh, any movie I've ever seen with zombies, they don't talk. They grunt and they moan. Right. This idea that they have free speech because they got money, that's baloney. On, we money. have the speech and we need to use it. Let's go to these corporations and demand their demise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In 2006 and 2008, Richard was the Green Party candidate in District 4 for the U.S. House, for the US House of Representatives. He was a guest lecturer and visiting professor of law, teaching the philosophy of law in India, where he and his family resided for 10 years. He is presently not practicing law, but teaches logic to Indian lawyers by teleconference. So he labels himself an American call center. Richard has written a book of po poetry and prose entitled The Slow News of Need. Richard is committed to helping make our world more sane and just. He acts on his beliefs often against opposition and frequently with substantial loss of advantage. Arrested numerous times for his actions of civil disobedience, this past October, Richard was tried and convicted for failure to obey a lawful order for protesting our wars in front of the White House with Veterans for Peace. It's really what, yay, applause is yeah. Um, it's really what you lose and suffer for what you believe that actually creates the belief that makes it truly your own. Through the words of Walt Whitman, we can better understand what motivates Richard Duffy. What is expected of you but to love mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly with my God? This is, this is what you shall do. Love this earth and sun and the animals. Despise riches. Stand up for the stupid and crazy. Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants. Have patience and indulgence toward the people. Take off your hat to nothing known or unknown. It is with great privilege that I introduce Richard Duffy. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, 40% of the wealth of this country is owned by 1% of the people. Another, the second percentile, owns another 10%. So imagine a room 100 feet by 100 feet. It has 100 people in it. The first two people draw a line down the middle of the room and they tell the other 98 people, if you want to touch anything on our side of the room, first you pay us. Through American history, the rich have been telling the poor that it's their own fault.
fault that they're poor because they're not entrepreneurs. When they know perfectly well that the poor do not have the necessary capital to create jobs for themselves. So, we, we're up against systematic lies that have been going on for a very long time. My name is Ben Martin, for anyone who knows, doesn't know me, um, and I want to speak on behalf of Wolfpack.com. That's wolf-pack.com. Wolf-pack.com. And they are a organization working for a 28th Constitution Amendment to end corporate personhood. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read uh, the flyer that I printed off of their site. Our politicians are bought. Everyone knows it. Conservatives know it. Liberals know it. Democra the Democrats are bought. The Republicans are bought. They don't represent us. They represent the corporate donors who fund their campaigns and promise them well-paying jobs after they leave office. Yet corporate wealth and corporate power continues to grow unabated as the Supreme Court ruled in 2010 in Citizens United versus FEC that corporations can now spend unlimited money in politics. Our democracy is in serious trouble. It's time to change that. It's time to end the corporate takeover of our government. The only way to do that is to bypass the corporate-owned Congress and the Supreme Court and pass a constitutional amendment. We must pass a 28th Amendment saying that corporations are not people and they do not have the right to spend money to buy our politicians. Our Congress is completely infected with the virus, so proposing an amendment through Congress seems hopeless. But luckily there is another way. We can do this purely at the state level. The states can call for a constitutional convention and they can ratify an amendment that comes out of one and that there is nothing our corporate federal government can do about it. The objective of Wolfpack is to raise money and raise an army for the sole purpose of passing this amendment. We must gather up a fighting force. We need this movement to be in all 50 states. Please visit our website at www.wolf-pack.com. Check out volunteer opportunities and write us to tell us how you can help. Donate. Sign our petition supporting a 28th constitutional amendment to end corporate personhood. Let's go occupy the states. Yeah. Right. I, I uh, wasn't born here in Hartford, but I lived here all my adult life, and I am a, uh, a, a taxpayer, I am a, a registered voter, I'm a mother and I'm an artist, I'm a Christian, and uh, I love people, and I do love this city, and I know that there are a lot of people that have economic problems, have financial problems here in Hartford. And, uh, well, the big corporations seem like they uh, used to be a lot of jobs out there, but not so much anymore. And I think jobs is one of the number one issues um, of poor folk here in Hartford. And uh, so we, we, we need work. People need jobs. So yeah. I, I have been speaking to a lot of people about cottage industries, yes. about starting and your own little businesses, Absolutely. the different skills that we have and Excellent. the talents that we have, and use that to uh, earn money to, um, uh, you know, to, to support our families. Perfect. So I really want to encourage people in that area to use what you have. We appreciate everybody coming. Now you've heard, you've heard about the threats to having a true democracy and the powers wielded by the privileged few, the one percent. So what can we, you and I do? We can keep on doing what we do because the sleeping dragon has been awakened. Get active in your local Occupy organization. Yes. Get active with Occupy Wall Street because they are going to play a larger role in this. More will be happening. Get active in local movements such as transition town initiatives that are springing up all over the United States, in fact, all over the world. Get active in new cooperative businesses that are developing. Support local agriculture, local manufacturing, local credit unions and community banks, local small businesses to keep money 
Law firm. Yes. 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 Help in the development of local barter systems, yep. such as the one that is being started up in Willimantic. It will be totally egalitarian because every hour earned for whatever service you provide will be equal to an hour of service offered by other skilled people using their talents. Right. All these actions will strengthen us as close-knit communities. This will help to make us more self-sufficient, sustainable, resilient, and better able to withstand the threats of the 1%, the corporations, and the corrupt actions of those who presently seem to hold an uneven balance of power. You receive some information, or you will be receiving information, green in your hands, which is a well thought out resource. So please use it, don't lose it. Make copies and send it out to your special network of people. It's only by working together and swelling the numbers that we can make a significant impact. Today's action is only one uh, of many to follow in this region. Connect with us, march with us in, in this ongoing community effort. It's cold, but it warms me to see all of you here with your concerns for an equitable and peaceful world. And we'll keep going on. We'll keep doing what has to be done. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. For being here. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you to our speakers. And thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the sunshine. You've all been so great hanging out with us. You've all been so great hanging out with us. I wanted to announce, make an announcement. On January 24th, next Tuesday, at the Hartford Public Library, at 5:30 p.m. There will be a forum. There will be a forum, and it's going to be discussing the Citizens United ruling, which gave. Which gave corporations, corporations personhood, personhood and the ability to spend unlimited amounts of money in our campaigns, in our campaigns. Elections. elections. So I would like it if folks from Hartford could get there. I would like it if folks from Hartford could get there. Um, there would and occupy folks from Hartford. everywhere. Folks from everywhere. Um, so I just wanted to say another thing, uh, you maybe don't mic check me right now, uh, and that is there's a statewide movement to pass resolutions in cities uh, across America that state that corporations are not people and that money is not speech. So in Willimantic, when I return to my town, that's my next step of what I'll be trying to do. Those resolutions are not binding necessarily, but they do reflect uh, public opinion, and it's a place where we can start. Um, so I think New York City just passed, I don't know if anybody spoke about this stuff already, but. Uh, yeah, so Jay, do you want to say something more, please? <laughs> this is Jay Caymans, he's from Occupy Hartford. Oh, good. Hey, Jay. Good. Welcome. Jay. Come We've had a big week. We've had, had a big week. week. We were down in Washington. We were down in Washington. Occupy Congress was awesome. Occupy Congress was awesome. We met with Joe Courtney while we were down there. We met with Joe Courtney while we were down there. And he supports the Occupy movement. And he supports the Occupy movement. And we had a great day of protest. And we had a great day of protest. With Citizens United as one of the main um, topics. With Citizens United as one of the main topics. Um, Occupy New Haven. 
Occupy New Haven. And Occupy Hartford. And Occupy Hartford. Have both uh, passed resolutions. Have both uh, passed resolutions. Against corporate personhood. Against corporate personhood. And we welcome Will Mantic. And we welcome Will Mantic. Into that group. Into that group. And we'll move it all the way across the country. And we'll move it all the way across the country. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Creative visions, dedication, and commitment for a more just and peaceful world spells Phoebe Godfrey, our, our last speaker and friend. A professor of sociology, she te teaches at Eastern Connecticut State University and at the University of Connecticut. A few years ago, David and I were students in her community and creativity class at University of Connecticut. She was so skilled in motivating and inspiring us all to question, critically evaluate, and analyze problems and then move to action. She has donated her time to offer numerous classes to community on challenges we face in our environment and with our food industry. She was awarded a Community Poverty Reduction Grant from the Access Agency to begin a Cooperative Kitchen Initiative project and was recently awarded an additional $100,000 grant for this effort. She is working toward equality and democracy in education and is envisioning work in an alternative school at Voluntown Peace Trust. Phoebe challenges our minds touches our hearts and helps us to stretch in our visions and in our actions. Please welcome Phoebe Godfrey. Yay! Welcome. Yay! Hello. Thank you everybody. Thank you everybody who's here. Sorry I'm late. Um, I think one of the things I wanted to start with because when we go to protest sometimes there's that feeling of frustration and it doesn't feel like it's worth it. But there's that wonderful quote by Reinhold Niebuhr who says, nothing worth doing can be accomplished in any one lifetime, and therefore we must be saved by faith. And I think from a sociological perspective, it's so important to keep that in mind, that it takes hundreds of years to change oppressive systems. And we are in a legacy of a, an oppressive system. This idea of corporations as people has been around as long as this country. I mean, if we think of back to the history of slavery, the idea of the institution that dominates the idea of, of human sovereignty. Um, and so this country was kind of founded on the right of the monopolies over the individual. And we are still, in a way, in this struggle against, you know, putting forth the human element above the profiteering, above the institution, above the corporate. And so when we look back, our government has always been ruled by corporate interests. Uh, if you could look back at the case with the railroad and how the railroad companies pressured our government to eliminate the Native Americans. And so this is not something new, but I think more and more people are becoming conscious that this is a very psychologically destructive system. Uh, if, I'm sure some of you have seen the film The Corporation um, and their wonderful analysis that uh, if a corporation is a person, what kind of person is it? And it basically matches the criteria for the World Health Organization for a psychopath. Um, and I think of that in terms of how when I feel a little bit off, it's like I live in a psychopathic society, a society that promotes behavior that is mentally destructive to our intellects, to our beings, to our in, and to our biology. I mean, we're basically killing ourselves on a massive scale. And so, you know, when we come together to, to protest, it's in a way, it's like therapeutic. It's like going to heal from the mental illness that surrounds us, you know? And I, I mean, obviously we all broke here with Exxon or Shell gas. Um, we are implicated on every level, but there are degrees to which we can choose not to support the system. And those, I think, are the choices that raise our consciousness, that heal our beings, that every time you say, I'm going to choose this product over that product, we're sending a message. I'm actually 
teaching a class this semester on the sociology of food, and we started right off looking at conventional bananas versus fair trade bananas, and how every banana you buy sends a message, do you support child labor, do you support you know, shooting of union organizers, do you support fumigation and, and pesticide, or do you support the effort to create some kind of cooperative economy based on fair trade, based on respect for fellow human beings and the environment. And I think, you know, for students and for all of us, it's like, you know, this power to the people goes all the way down to which banana you buy. You know, and although they are more expensive, you could say, well, I'm giving to a system that I would like to see in the future. I'm paying into, it's like kind of pay it forward, that idea, if I pay 99 cents for my bananas, I'm paying for a world that I would like to see versus 30 cents where I'm supporting one that is making me ill, not just mentally, but also by eating those bananas, I know that I'm contributing to my own development of future cancer or something. So I think, you know, with everybody here, you're all, you all know the issues, it's just the need to feel reinforced that you're on the right track, you know, that, that this time that we're taking or this moment that we're sharing or all of the effort to make the mass, and, you know, that this is the path to health and healing and it may take a hundred years, but one day, you know, again, we will look back and go, well, that was a movement worth fighting for. And it's one, and I think it's so important to see it as linked to the anti-slavery movement, the Native American movement, the right for women, the right, you know, that these are all about, you know, what does it mean to be human? And what does it mean to put human life above somebody else's profit, somebody else's gain. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that's been so normalized in our society that it's okay, you know, to, to, to trample on people for money. I mean, basically our entire system is about making money from killing and exploiting other people. Um, but again, that's how we began. We began with, with the international slave trade and, and that's still where we are. It's just kind of morphed a little bit, become more global in a way. Um, and so, to kind of reinforce for ourselves what, you know, what creates meaning and how important the, the social piece is. Right? I mean, the, the, this issue of how socialism has been demonized, but you know, society is about humans coming together. We are social beings and we are intuitive. I mean, they're finding all kinds of evidence that when you support people, when you gain compassion, you, you become healthier mentally, physically, that we are wired to be cooperative, to be compassionate, to be, you know, community-based, not to be tramping on each other and creating a system that makes us all mentally ill. Um, and I think, you know, when I do feel depressed, it's like, oh, it's the system. And our court system is, though, not set up. And that's the irony, you know, we look at corporations as persons, but our system is not set up to hold them accountable in the way that persons are held accountable. And we as individuals are held accountable for things that are actually social issues. And so there's this kind of contradiction that I was thinking about this morning, you know, where, you know, when Ford Pinto blows up, nobody's held accountable. Or when Firestone makes the decision between you know, killing a few people or 10 people or whatever, or recalling tires, it's not about an individual making a choice. Nobody is ever held singularly accountable. And yet if I steal a dollar off any one of you, I would be held accountable as an individual because our courts aren't even set up to deal with institutions as actors, right? I mean, you know, if I sell drugs on the road, I'm not going to be held in, in context and say, okay, why did Godfrey sell drugs? Well, it must it's her system. Her system's not providing, I just spent three weeks on unemployment, I would have been better off selling drugs. I mean, you know, financially, but the system isn't set up to protect us as individuals, and yet we look at these laws and they're set up to allow institutions to behave in ways that we as individuals aren't even allowed to. So it's that we're, they're persons, but they're not persons in any way when it comes to accountability. Um, so I think that, you know, this is a, a, a wonderful campaign that we can all agree with that it affects every aspect of our life. And you can take any one corporation. And again, you know, I, when I teach this, I tell my students, you know, if you're playing Monopoly, 
you know, it's not a, it's not looked as a moral issue to try to win. We don't look at you as a scumbag because you know you are charging me rent for landing on. You know, that's the rules of the game, and the rules of the game are so sick. You know, and it's kind of like we need to recognize that that, that illness embedded in every aspect of our society everything from you know the clothes we buy the food we eat you know the health care we get i mean this is the capital of insurance you know and it's like i don't have insurance right now and part of me regret you know wishes i did but at the same time i know if i had insurance i would be supporting you know a scum system so it, it's like we are constantly put in this situation hi how are you good um, we're constantly put in this situation where our own ethics are held up against our own safety, right? And our own sense of security. And, and that shouldn't be the way you live. I mean, there should be cooperative choices for healthcare, cooperative choice. I and mean, luckily I live where there is a food co-op. I don't have to buy from Whole Foods. And Whole Foods is a corporation just like any other. I mean, we think, oh, I'm buying organic, you know, but it's like they have the same bottom line, which is to make money. Know, and if they do it by doing organic, it's like when Walmart goes organic, you know, something went wrong. You know, you know the organic movement kind of missed the mark a little bit there. You know, or, or, you know, so things like that are, should make us wake up and go, wait a minute, it's not about big organic, it's about eating, you know, right here where I live. And kind of making those choices that are uh, extremely conscious, you know, that every aspect, every time I pump gas, I have to think, you know, where am I going? Is it worth it? You know, what's what's the payoff here? Am I giving something back to somebody by just driving? You know, and so I, I'm sure all of you. I mean, I don't I don't really like to talk too much because I think that creates a sort of monopoly, and we're opposed to monopolies, right? Um, so what what do other people think? Does anybody else want to share? We're screwed, and we are screwed. Yeah, <laughs> but we're we, we're. We can't take we are screwed completely because then we just want to yeah. fall down and die, right? Yeah. You know, so we have to keep that balance between we feel screwed, but we feel inspired enough to recognize how to switch that screwness and take Thank charge. You. Yeah, Thank and you. take Thank and you. feel. And that's what the transition cam movement's about. I don't know if you want people to step into the camera. Do you come up? Oh yes, that's what the transition. That's Miriam, town she's involved in the transition town. The transition town movement. Um, it's about local people getting together and trying to solve the problems because, um, not, and not relying on the government to do it. It's about taking charge locally. And um, if you can get your local government to work with you, that's great. In Mansfield, actually, we are, we are working together with the town of Mansfield. And, um, and it's about changing the economy, too, to an economy that's worker owned cooperative rather than top-down. It's about changing the whole system so that we're not, we're not dependent on the big corporations. We're not dependent on these powers that, are, that don't care about our environment, that don't care about the people who, who, live, who live, who are trying to make a living, and who are or who, who are homeless. But the transition towns means that you're you doing it locally in order yeah, it's important. Yes. By anyway, staying local. By staying local. No. By staying local. <laughs> we know we can okay, you know. have to change. We can't change the world, but we can change where we are. Yeah. And where we live. We can have an effect on our immediacy, not on the greater chaos of the world. But all those immediacies add up. And every drop of water counts, even in an ocean. Yeah, I think actually, just on that note, a lot of times my students will say, well, you know, what difference does it make if I recycle? It's just that, you know, it's like, everything makes a difference. The question of, is it a difference that is life supporting, or is it a difference that is basically death supporting? And is it, you know, and if you recycle or throw it on the street, that's a difference. You know, it, it may seem so small, but it creates a different relationship, not only for you to your community, but also for the next person who sees you. I mean, we are social beings. We look at each other, we dress alike, we mimic, we follow, we do fashion, we do all those things. And it's like, when we see behaviors, we go, oh. And when, you know, and those are basically our 
they're actually called mirror ne neurons. You know, we are wired to imitate. And so this behavior, even if we are just 10 people, can be seen as a model of how we would like other people. And it opens up that possibility that it's okay. It is what a citizen should do, is stand up for these ideas and these larger ethics. So. I want to add yes, something. Definitely. I want to just add to what Miriam talked about transition town. For those of you that might not know what it is, it's happening all around the world, and um, it's about working together, strengthening community, and helping to make your community sustainable and more sustainable and resilient. And we do that on different uh, paths. One is to transition as best as we can off of fossil fuels to alternative forms of energy. And the other is through food, uh, getting away from the factory farms that actually don't care a bit about our health. They're only concerned, like all corporations, like Phoebe was saying, the bottom line, which is the dollar. So it's buying local and buying organic when we can and growing our own food when we can and supporting community gardens. And like David mentioned um, before, it's also local money. So like he mentioned, Woolamantic is gonna, we're starting on the barter system through access agency. And it's gonna be hour for hour. And it's totally egalitarian. So it's coming together, not with an agenda, but working together with people in our community on initiatives that will strengthen our communities. Our transition communities, are they listed? Do they have a website? Yeah, where can we go to learn more yeah, about it? Transition.org? Transition Town? Transition Town.org, try. And there's also um, transitiontown.net, I think. Okay, it's please try. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, sorry. Transition USA. Okay, Transition <laughs> USA. <laughs> try any of those. Don't give up until you find it, because then it. you'll find Google. a lot on your on the web. And um, it's uh, what's his name again? Who started Rob it? Hopkins. Yeah, and there's a big transition. Rob, Rob, Hopkins. Rob Hopkins. There's a transition manual that you can read. In fact, we're doing it in our group in Mansfield, but we're from the region on learning all about it. Yeah, and Ben wanted to share something. Yes, yeah, I just great. wanted to say, um, you spoke a little bit about the, the transition. Transition town is working towards this thing, but there's there's a number I think we all need to remember, and that's 350. Yes. And that's yes. um, that's the number of the of amount of carbon, parts per million, in the atmosphere that supports human life. And we have gone beyond it. And we need to get back to that, and we need to stop raising our level of carbon. Yeah. And um, so, uh, like you say, every time you fill up, you need to think about whether that's important or not. And if there's another way to get there, if there's a, you know, we need to do the renewable energy, we need to do all that. And another thing that you said that I want to get back to is, um, you know, you know, it's like, oh, well, one person can make a difference. Um, uh, last year in August, I went down to Washington, D.C. to tell the president that I didn't want him to approve the Keystone XL pipeline. And I think if I went down there by myself, I wouldn't have made a difference. But I went anyways because it was just too important. Luckily, 1,200 other people decided to come with me. And so each drop, each person that got arrested, each person that came down there convinced the president that this was a bad idea. And then 12,000 more came back in November and said, we don't want this. And so the thing that you can make a difference. And you know, sometimes it's lonely and sometimes it's hard and that time I spent in jail was really crappy. <laughs> but I was happy to do it because I knew it was important and I knew it had to be done. And luckily so far, we've we've won. Yeah, well, we gotta is. keep fighting, yes. but we've won. And I just want everyone to remember that number, that 350. Yeah. Keep it in your head and do whatever you can to bring our atmosphere back to that parts per million. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And it's 350.org. 350.org. Yeah, right. Also, we have, we have a group in Connecticut. Oh. Called, we also have a group in Connecticut called 350, 350 CT, 350 Connecticut. We're doing a lot of work around um, not only the tar sands, um, uh, getting some press, and getting Connecticut has a great law called the Global, Warm, Global Warming Solutions Act, which is, is a bunch of targets to lower Connecticut's emissions to levels that, back to 2001 levels, I believe. 
And so we're, we want to work to get that implemented because it's on the books, it's a law that can be followed, and we just need to get our people in government to do the work to do it. So 350 Connecticut, Global Warming Solutions Act, thank you. Thank you. Just to wrap up, I think again, keeping the big picture in mind, and that you know, what, even when we think of half of the population of the United States, took them 250 years to get the vote. When we're thinking about women's issues, or so, I think even this, you know, changing our whole economy is going to take you know, our entire lifetime. But each little step and each little piece just like each particle of carbon. It's like it's the same of how did we reach over 350? Well, each one of us contributed a tiny little piece and you maximize that globally and then you end up with the situation that we're in. So kind of reversing that ideology in your eye, each little step does have an impact. And I think that's the most important piece to constantly keep that meaning alive in yourself and keep the idea of why you are doing this and, and doing it from a place of love for a better world or love for your for your neighbor for your citizen and the transition town thing also kind of keeping in mind that that's a tra that would be a town that also had social justice that had diversity that had you know anti-racism that didn't practice the very oppressive things that the rest of our society practices so it's not just about sustainable energy but sustainable human relationships so thank you everybody thank you. Thank you. Thank you.